Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Monday, March the 13th, 2017. Looking at a chart of gold, this is the weekly chart of the gold futures. You can see how the market has come off and it's now trading below and outside of the Kumo cloud, but resting right here near support. The question is, are we about to see an acceleration to the downside and get closer to that 1100 mark? So we have a possible 100 point drop coming. Um, first of all, first and foremost, we're looking at about 100 points, $100, I'm sorry, <laughs> looking at about $100 uh, coming into play here. So that's kind of what we're looking for right now, about $100 is possible and we'll see where we go from there if this market cannot gather its legs that's what is looking like it's going to happen the market needs to close above 12 1950 or it's pretty much going to be toast um that's just the way it is right now we've broken those key component areas that i was speaking about uh, over the last couple of weeks and as you can see, the market is moving in that direction. So we could be seeing uh, a very different uh, gold market uh, in, the, in the near future. It's trying to hold on for dear life, but right now we are in a bear market. All right, this is the beginning stages of the bear market this is the, the, the right here this is what this looks like all right we took out the, this is a weekly chart we've come from here all right the price action led the way then the price action actually confirmed it here and now we're we've been retracing off of those lows all right try to get something going but now we're falling off again so it has one more chance. It has another chance here to get in here and leg up and get to that 1300 mark, which is all, which is going to be critical and crucial if the bear market's going to gather some strength. However, it's looking like we could be at the beginning stages of a bear market. All right, this is what this is. The bull started here and it ended here. So it didn't last all that long. It started back in March. And now here we are ending officially in December. So March 16 to December 2016 is when everything ended officially. And then we had a retracement, a bear market retracement, bear market rally off those lows. Tried to get a trend change going up in here, but just failed. And now momentum's coming back off again. So it, it could try to do one more thrust, but it's looking like it's probably going to fail. We don't talk about what we think. We talk about what we see. You got to trade what you see. All right, looking at the miners, we're just, just put the miners on the weekly situation. Well, the miners, as you can see, came off of that $16.87 low, and we got up to $52.50, so nice, powerful run-up. Then we gave it all back, came as low as $27. Still holding on to those gains off the, the lows here. Rallied back got up to $43 and now coming off from there to here all right so it's still maintaining its bullish complexion but just barely it's elongating now in the Kumo cloud of consolidation and it's looking like it needs to make its mind up are we going to get like a, a double top here like a head and shoulders pattern and then drop again or is it going to really get going here and come up out of the stratosphere what's going to happen so we're, we're waiting and watching uh, as it stands right now so far uh, you need thirty six dollars and sixty four cents 
uh, to close this week to put an end to the to the downtrend and reestablish the bull the bull run. So that's what we're looking right right now in in the miners. Uh, taking a look at the dollar index. The ice is doing their thing. I have to get that taken care of, get that fixed. All right. Here you have a situation where you came off of the highs and now it's trying to correct and get a bull run started. But it seems to be waning. It's elongating a little bit, it's moving sideways. Past several weeks, we really haven't gone anywhere. All right, so this is week five, and here you are. Market needs to get something going. It's still bullish in, it, in its complexion, as you can see, but I still think that it wants to get a nice, strong close, build a support around the 102, 103 level. So I can get up to that 106 and even higher is still the potential for this U.S. dollar. I don't know why people keep talking about the the demise of this market when this market has been doing nothing but getting stronger and stronger, and along with Bitcoin, I should I should add. Um, you can look here at the cash side of this market. Look at ticker symbol UUP, and you see here we are, same type of a situation. All right. So here you go. You see how it came off the lows down here. All right, hit twenty three ninety six, and now here we are here three dollars later. All right, so all right, taking a look now at the crude oil. <coughs> Excuse me, and you can see on the weekly chart, it's just trading inside this key range right here. Like I told you, you know, fifty one top side. And 44 is the bottom side, so it can it can stretch down here, and get all the way down to here, and still be within its range. Right now, the complexion, the bullish complexion, is still here, but your momentum is now starting to come off. I warned of that that the market was was, was up here flirting around, couldn't bust through, and now it's testing the bottom side of its range. And then I'm sure once it gets down here and gets restless, then it'll come back up and go to the top side of the range. It just needs some kind of a story. I mean, right now, this is the weekly chart, and you don't, you're don't you not going anywhere. You're right here. You can see right across the board. Just draw a straight line going all the way across. You're nowhere. You are nowhere. You're still trading within the zone from August the 15th of 2016. Where was that zone? That zone was $49 top side with the $44 bottom side. Again, here we are. See? And then here was this top side here. This old high got bested and we got up to it. We moved into this zone here. All right, market waffled around a bit. Tried to tried to stretch out the range, and then failed. So up here is not is not the true range. Here, within this body, is the true range. Up here was just hitting the ceiling. Couldn't best that 55. Never got a close at 55. That was topside resistance, strong resistance, and now here you are down here. So you're just range bound in crude oil overall with weakening momentum all right where we go from here probably going to test the the lower end of the range you could get down to the 44 but don't be surprised if it just rockets back up again for whatever reason there's just no clear direction in the oil at this time if you look at the cash side of things and ticker symbol oih it's showing, you know, it's showing you what the futures can't, which is the, you know, this this downward sloping of falling off momentum. 
lack of buying interest overall. All right, it's lack of buying. It it, it got topsided at thirty six thirty five, and now here we are at thirty dollars. So you've come six dollars off of those highs, and you're going nowhere. All right, momentum's falling off. All right, so as momentum falls off, it has the potential to consolidate between $28 and $30 and just kind of stretch itself out and go nowhere. So that's what you're looking at. 28 bottom side, 32 top side, ad infinitum, unless something happens, some kind of backstory to get this market going. Other than that, it's, it's doing nothing. Uh, looking here at the biotech, biotech here also having problems uh, up here at the 123 handle, having some problems. We, we just can't get a close above 123. So 123 is the top side resistance. Can it punch through? We'll have to wait and see. Um, it still has its bullish energy built into it. And all systems are go here. It could continue to run up a little bit. I think that is what's going to help propel the stock market also. If you look here at the XIV, same situation. All right, has this momentum still in there. We just hit a new high. We're just going kind of straight up here. You see it's starting to break away from its trend line support more and more question is is it going to bump where is the resistance going to be we don't know yet can it be the $70 handle I'm not sure we don't know yet but this is where we are all right so we still have looks like a, a lot of run left in this market before we can really uh, see any signs of slowing I just, I just don't see any signs of slowing right now it's just not there looking at your gold on the GLD on the cash side you can see better definition of us being below that cloud here all right want to show that same thing with your silver look at SLV same story all right same scenario below that Kumo cloud momentum waning it's the same story that's all just a different market looking at these junk bonds all right Junk bonds, you can see they were they were bullish, they fell off, now they didn't rally back again, and now they're starting to come off again. Testing this trend line support. Market seems to be having a problem at that thirty-seven dollar handle. Uh, the up the higher end of the thirty-seven dollar range is starting to have some problems with. So you can see that overall we've been in a zone here. We we kind of been in this zone, this uh 36 to 37 dollar zone so give about a dollar's worth of just range bound overall which you, where you've been you just been inside of this zone trading at the high end low end high end low end is kind of what you got going here and the bullish picture is still intact there looking at the long bond end of things on the weekly you can see it tried to hang in here and consolidate, but then it broke down into new lows. So now you're well into the 116 handle, and it seems to be uh, gaining momentum, slow, like a slow drip. But you see the, the momentum line is, is pointing down, and the trend is well established and defined at this point. You've dropped from $143.62 down to 116.51, which is quite a drop. Uh, and this opens that door wide open to the continuance of higher rates in the, in the, in the not too distant future, which would be this month primarily. Uh, I want to end up with, let's first of all go with the commodity sector. With the strong dollar hanging in there, you can see here that the commodities CRB index here is basically starting to uh, to flatten out it's been flat for quite a while just trading in this $39 to $41 zone had a brief period of breaking out here but to the 43 handle but overall you're still trading within this 38 to $41 range 
and really not a lot happening here. So the prices of commodities have been pretty much stable uh, based on, you can see here, the, the prices and commodities have been stable. All right, not a lot of trending going on here on this weekly chart. But you can see we did stretch down toward the bottom of the range, trying to break out into some new lows here. Uh, a close below $38.21 uh, would open the door to uh, a more defined possible beginning stage of a bear market uh, for commodities. That will definitely be the case that the U.S. dollar can get going and hit that 106 target that we've been talking about. Uh, now I will finish in the financial sector. See if we can find some clues of where the stock market is headed. You can see the XLF is up here and it's just, it's chilling. You know, it's breaking out into new highs and it's hanging in there. It's keeping that momentum going. A close below $24.56 this week, though, would be the first sign of a possible top. All right? I say possible. Okay? We broke momentum back here this week only to set up for the next leg up. Will this be the case this time? That's a good question. be difficult to say. Can we see anything more defined in the trend by looking at FAS? And not really. FAS is, you know, it's tracking the XLF perfectly. But here you are. This is what we got. All right. So do yourself a favor. Come on over to PostwayTrading.com and learn how to navigate these murky waters of runaway algorithmic patterns and price manipulations and interest rate manipulations by the Fed and all types of other shenanigans. Learn how to put the power of the algorithm on your side and benefit from what the central banks fail to do and continue to do on the manipulation side of the spectrum. Also learn how to hedge your physical portfolio and earn a decent living, make it enough money to provide for you and your loved ones. Come on over to postwavetrading.com. And remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. And I will end. I forgot about natural gas. Here you go in that gas. Having trouble here at this, uh, this $7 range, which corresponds to the $3 range in the natural gas futures. So is it going to be able to close above two, 295 this week. We can stay above 295. It's possible it could try to make a run for 350. All right. But we have trouble here at the 306 handle resistance. That's what we're having problems with. All right. So you got to watch this because it could, it could roll over from here. So just keep your eyes open. And again, and again, if you look at the UNG, that's the cash side here of the commodity that correlates to the $7.776 top side resistance on this one, okay? Uh, you can also uh, get a, a good gauge if you look at the UGAS. It's the same thing. That's just your leveraged ETF, and you can see it's been flat. It's trying to lift off here, but... $26.50 is this overhead resistance. And you're looking at about, you know, six, seven bucks away. So we'll see what happens here. But postwavetrading.com. Peace.